Greetings, it is I, the Great One himself, founder of the Cynical Libertarian Society, 10 fucking years of podcasting, C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com on the interwebs. I'm here at the Anarchy Moment to drop some CLSology on your bitch asses. Standing here right now, I got my cup of coffee. I'm about to have my cup of coffee as soon as I put the microphone in the other hand so I can drink coffee. Standing here with my cup of coffee in my underwear, I just got back from trail running where in a recent episode I mentioned the hot chick on the bicycle as trail running ran into her again today I obeyed the law I forced her to yield for me and I got to chat with her for a minute this girl holy shit this chick is hot I would eat her shit I wouldn't even need to put salt on it I would just it just it come right out of her ass I would eat her shit that is how good looking she is so anyhow, we'll find out about personality. I know where she bicycles at now. I'm pretty sure I'm going to see her again. Anyway, you did not come here. <laughs> come? Get it? Come? <laughs> you didn't come here. You did not come here to hear me talking about eating the shit of really, really hot women who ride their mountain bike up the side of mountains. Oh my god. Whew. It's going to be a while before I can get her out of my brain. Anyway. Here's what you came here for. First of all, I just fired up the computer, checked the RSS feed. I saw some stuff by the captain, Captain Capitalism. I know I talk about him a lot lately. Just deal with it. He put up a post. Was it today? Oh, it was yesterday. He put up a post yesterday. And also today in People's Republic of Fort Collins, it's Bike to Work Day. So the bike trails, as I was biking out to do my trail running and biking home, the bike trails are covered in all these fucking posers. Okay, I ride my bicycle at 6 a.m. on the weekdays to this same place where I trail run. I make this travel all the time. I see 10 people the whole fucking route. Today, there's people on bicycles everywhere because it's bike to work day and the city government gives you free breakfast. If you, it's like, ben, by, of course, by free breakfast, we mean breakfast that I fucking paid for. So there's all these fucking posers who are out riding their bikes to work and stopping off to get their free breakfast. You know, I fucking hate you, poser. Look, if you don't ride your bike to work, every fucking day or almost every day. Speaking as someone, for those of you new, I do not own an automobile. I have not owned an automobile for over 10 years. Occasionally I need an automobile. I do this thing called renting. I rent a car. It works great. It saves me a lot of money, time, hassle, no park, yada, 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 yada. Okay. Speaking as somebody who actually uses a bicycle as my main source of transportation, I really fucking hate all of you goddamn posers. I'm going to bike to work today and get some free breakfast that the great one paid for with his tax money. Fuck you. Anyway, all right, you didn't hear, you did not come here, hear me talk about eating the shit of the hot mountain biking girl, and you did not come here to hear me bitching about posers riding their bicycles. Here's what you came here for. The captain wrote a post called Arguing Past Their Narrative, which is really good. I'm not, this is not an analysis. I'm just saying you should go read this, captaincapitalism.blogspot.com. If I think about it, I'll put a link in the show notes to it. But, you know, again, this is this is why I quote the captain so much and talk about, I saw this in his video because I watch all this fucking, you know, the guy, he's there. He's, I'm not sure why he's not an anarcho-capitalist because he's there. He so fucking gets it. It's a whole thing about ar trying to argue with leftists, why it doesn't work, how it doesn't work, and what leftists really are, which is lazy people who don't want to fucking work for a living. That is what left-wing statists are. It's a fact. It's hurting your feelings. I'm racist, sexist, homophobic, transphobic, trans-fucking-racial-phobic, whatever the fuck phobics I am, that's great. It doesn't fucking matter, okay? Left-wing statists are lazy motherfuckers who don't want to work for a living. End of discussion. So I'm sitting here looking at my RSS feed. I use a program called Quite RSS, Q-U-I-T-E-R-S-S. -S. It's available for 
Windows and Mac, I mean Linux, and I think it's available for Mac too. It's just an RSS reader. If you're looking for an RSS reader, I can highly recommend this one. It's very solid. I've been using it for a long time. And it saves me from having to go look at all these websites every day. So right above that is a post he published called Time to Abandon the USS MGTOW. And it's just a link to Matt Forney's article over on Return of Kings that I just talked about, where Matt Forney talks about why MGTOW is a sinking ship and why MGTOW is the equivalent of feminism and yada, yada, yada. We did all that already. All right. So anyhow, and this is one of those moments where this is all just off the top of my I'm standing here, and all of this started occurring to me, and I grabbed the microphone, and here we go. And so this is not structured and ordered. We're just following. This is the org... Or blah, 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 blah. This is the organic process that was going through my brain. So I'm thinking about this, and I'm like, yeah, they're right, but God damn it, you know, I've just done all this talking about how Roosh and Forney, while they get so much, they're still statist because they're still clinging to their, and I, I don't know if it's hatred for or if it's fear of, but Roosh, Forney, all these other, I shouldn't say all, many, and let me just throw this, the, the, I talk quite a bit about the Manosphere, and I know on the website I link to a lot of Manosphere sites. And let me also throw this out. I am not a member, I do not consider myself a member of the Manosphere, and that's only because I don't think I have the credentials in my life to run around and try to say, you know, I am a manosphere kind of guy or whatever. It's I it, it's not because I would not want to be part of that community. It's because I don't think I have the credentials. It's just like you show up to me and you want to talk about politics and I ask you two or three questions and you don't know the definition of socialism and all this other stuff. You're not in my league. I'm not going to converse with you, right? In a lot of ways, I recognize that when it comes to things like meeting chicks and dealing with women all says I am not in the league with people like Roosh. And so I'm not pretending to be a member of the Manosphere, but I see a lot of overlap in the Manosphere with anarcho-capitalist philosophies. That's why I lean in that direction a lot. That's why I talk about blogs and posts and writers from the Manosphere. You know, it says and Aruni is another one. I mean Aruni has the Aruni and I have a lot of concepts in common. He sees the shit I see, I see the shit he's but even with Aruni also there comes this point. You know, and this is one of the things about the captain is I don't the the Aaron Clary, Captain Capitalism, I don't see him having this same roadblock that all these other people have. Forney, Roosh, Aruni. All smart guys, great thinkers. But they all have this roadblock. And it's either fear or it's hatred when it comes to individuals. Individuals making their own fucking choices and facing responsibility for those choices. Roosh, with his thing about the government, should make your decisions for you so you don't make mistakes. Forney with his bullshit about how relationships between people are the basis of civilization. Well, as I said in the podcast, you can't have a relationship between individual people without individual people. You don't have a forest without trees. You don't have a society, a nation, a city-state, a polis, whatever you want to call it. You a family. You don't have those things without individuals. And this hatred and fear of the individual that is found in many, not all, many people in the Manosphere, it honestly, it baffles the fuck out of me. And, I mean, it does. I, I don't understand why they have this roadblock. Because right-wing statists are still statists, and that's, that's sort of where my brain went next, because I started thinking about right-wing statists. And as those of you who listen to the show know, I spend most of my time making fun of left-wing statists, as I've said before, first of all, because they're such easy targets. And second of all, because you can hear right-wing statists being made fun of in basically any 
media anywhere in the United States. I mean, other than Fox News, everything on the television is attacking the right. It's all left-wing propaganda attacking the right. Okay, and so it's just like I, I don't want to make I kind of don't want to make fun of the right wing because everybody else is doing that. Although I do it when it's necessary. And of course, we also have a left wing president right now. So my brain is wrapping around this and saying, OK, wait, why is it? Why are there right wing statist? Because if right wingers are so into, or at least they claim, again, claims, claims are different than actions. As I've always said, you judge people not by what they say, but by what they do, right? This is why I'm not a member of the Manosphere, because you have to judge me by what I say, not by what I do. If I were Roosh, right now, instead of talking to you, I would be banging the hot mountain bike chick, but I'm not banging the hot mountain bike chick. I'm talking to you, right? So you have to judge me by what the fuck I'm doing, not by what the fuck I say. And God, I just, sorry, I can't get her out of my brain. And I only have like seven brain cells. Two of them are reserved at all times to think about redheads. And so the other five are tied up with the mountain bike chick. Who is not a redhead, she's a brunette. Anyway, with nice long hair like a woman should have. And sorry, I, I my my brain. It's I'm just thinking about the mountain bike chick. Okay, yes, why are right wing status status? I don't understand. See, I don't understand how People like Forney, Roosh, Aruni can see all of these problems and not make that last leap, which is weird because, of course, as I've talked about before, I didn't come out of the fucking womb as an... Well, actually, we all came out of the womb as an anarcho-capitalist, but then we had years and years and years of indoctrination telling us that it's okay to kill other people and steal their stuff. So I really do think people are born anarcho-capitalist, but it's the indoctrinations of society that fuck us up. Well, that's not true. That's not true at all. Some people are born statist. I'm a lying motherfucker. Don't listen to that. See, see how I corrected myself? That's why I'm always right. Because when I say something stupid, I recognize it and I take it back. No, statists are, are born, anarcho-capitalists are born. But even anarcho-capitalists, so we're born and caps, we come out, we're anarcho-capitalists and we come out of the womb, but then we get all this fucked up shit in our heads and then we have to overcome it. So I've been through this process, right? I was liberal Democrat, I was Christian, I was right-wing Republican, I was moderate Republican, I was, you know, I listened to Rush Limbaugh every fucking day, five days a week, religiously, believed everything he said, I made it to right-wing minarchist, I made it to libertarian, I made it, you know, and then finally I made the final little jump over to anarcho-capitalist. And looking back on it, I'm not really sure, in, even in my own path, what it was. Like, what was that last thing I had to overcome? What was it that made me, for so long, unable to let go of the idea that there needed to be government to do things for people? And this is what I see when I look in the manosphere. I see these people, like... Forney and Aruni and Roosh, these are competent, capable, successful, intelligent people. They have great life experiences. They have skills. They have talents. They're not the kind of people that you would expect to need a babysitter, which is, of course, what the government is. It's a babysitter. A government 
government is like the parent. I mean, when you see statist, statist are children. It's just like when you were a child, your parents provided for you. You just got, as far as you were concerned, these food and shelter and clothes, it all just showed up magically for free. You didn't really understand the economy behind it. And statists are people who want to go back to being children. They want the government to just provide them with things and they don't want to have to understand where this stuff comes from. They just want things given to them so that they can live in their perpetual childhood with their fucking liberal arts degree. Roosh, Forney, Aruni, do not strike me. And you know, again, just keep in mind, I don't know any of these people personally. I don't fucking stalk them. I don't have video cameras in their bedrooms. All I know about them is what I read, what I see on the interwebs. But they don't strike me as the kind of people who are children. They don't strike me as people who desire to have babysitters attending to them and wiping their asses for them. And I, I don't have any, there's no answers in this podcast. This, I'm, I'm, this is a question. If you have ideas, please fucking throw them at me. What I'm trying to figure out and what I'm probably going to be contemplating in addition to the mountain bike chick over the next time is what is it that prevents these people from making the final leap. Why can they, how do they get so close and yet still cling to this idea that the individual has to be controlled by an exterior force? That the individual doesn't matter. That it's, it's society. There's all, they, there, this is one thing, this is something I see in the manosphere is the focus on society. And it's the Star Trek, I call it the Star Trek philosophy because Spock in, what was it, Wrath of Khan said the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few, which is of course complete bullshit because the many is made up of the few, right? You can't protect the rights of everyone by taking rights away from people. You can't give everybody food by taking food away from individual people because the society that all the manosphere cares about you know, and I agree, societies are important. If, and this is the thing, well, if we didn't have, if we didn't have was anarcho-capitalism, there would be no society. Everybody would. And this is where the, the manosphere and the right-wing statists just parrot the left. Well, if there was no government, everybody would run down the street shooting each other and raping each other and all this other shit. And Ben Stone, back before he was a feminist, talked about this in some of his podcasts. You know, he pointed out, look at animals. And I mean, we're animals also, yes, but look at non-human animals. They have societies, monkeys and gorillas and dolphins. Actually, dolphins do rape other dolphins. That's not politically correct. You're not supposed to know that. But generally speaking, dolphins, walruses, swallows, prairie dogs, wolves, you don't see animals running through the forest, ki randomly killing and raping the other members of their own species. I think if they, who have less intelligence than anarcho-capitalist, but more intelligence than statist, as I've said before, the average animal is more intelligent than a statist, simply because the average animal can interact with other members of its species without having to kill them or steal from them, unlike a statist who is completely incapable of living unless that statist receives stuff stolen from other people by the government. Animals are generally more intelligent than statists. But yet, statists think they're very smart. So if statists are so fucking intelligent, they should be able to coexist with other humans just like animals coexist with other animals. I mean, it's really not that fucking hard for me to... I mean, for example, today on the running trail, there, there's mountain bike girl. I'm like drooling on myself and, you know, creaming my pants and stuff. It really wasn't that hard for me to refrain from raping her or beating her up or stealing her stuff, well, somehow or another, without the government there to make sure 
we interacted with, with each other the way the government wants us to, I was somehow or another able to just talk to her for 30 seconds and we both went on our ways and neither of us was dead, raped, or stolen from. Wow, imagine that. We managed to fucking communicate and coexist with each other. Wow. And yet statist of all forms, the right wing and the left wing, including Roosh, Aruni, uh, what's his name? Uh, yeah, 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 fuck, Matt Forney, right? They, they're standing here doing the same thing. They're asserting that if there's no government... Nobody will be able to coexist with each other and live together without raping and killing everyone around them. And this is why I truly believe there is something in the brain of a statist that is different from the brain of an anarcho-capitalist. It's a fucking brain chemistry thing. It's a genetic thing. There's something wrong with them that they are sociopaths, that they are incapable of interacting with other humans unless they have rules for those interactions imposed upon them from somebody else. And of course, as I've said before, in the United States, I can't really speak to other countries, I don't live in other countries, I don't know about other countries, I don't care about other countries, this is where I'm at, I'm in this geographical region, it's the only one I have first-hand knowledge of. Here in our geographical region, a place known as the United States, we're breeding the stupidest people. The dumber you are, the more kids you have, and the worse it's going to get. And this is why when I hear people in who people who are anarcho-capitalist, I almost said in the anarcho-capitalist movement, you all know how much I fucking hate that phrase, the movement. This is why when I hear anarcho-capitalists saying things are getting better, I just look at these people and I go, what the fuck is wrong with you? Things are not getting better. The population around us is getting dumber and dumber and dumber than shit. And even people out there who are so close to making the leap to anarcho-capitalism still cling to this fear of individuals who make their own choices and face the consequences of those choices. And until people can get over that as a nation, society, polis, whatever the fuck you want to call it, we're fucking screwed.